This video is going to be all about half-life word problems. So let's talk about half-life in general first. Half-life is a decay of 50%. And we know that our original exponential function is y equals a b to the x power. b is our growth factor. And we can find it by doing 1 plus or minus r. In this case, because it's going to be a decay of 50%, it's going to be 1 minus 0.5. Well, 1 minus 0.5 is... 0.5. So that's going to be our b value, y equals a 0.5 to the x. Except it's going to be slightly different because it's not going to be decaying by 50% each year. It's going to be defined by whatever the question tells us. So it's going to be y equals a 0.5 to the t over h. So y is going to be our final amount. A is still going to be the initial amount. T is going to be the time. And then H is going to be the half-life. So let's take a look at some examples. Example 1. One of the medical uses of iodine-131, a radioactive isotope of iodine, is to enhance x-ray images. The half-life of I-131 is approximately 8.02 days. A patient is injected with 20 milligrams of I-131. Determine to the nearest day the amount of time needed before the amount of I-131 in the patient's body is approximately 7 milligrams. So if you've noticed, I've underlined some key pieces of information we're going to be using. So I see the word half-life, so I know I'm using that formula that I just talked about. So I have Y equals A.5 to the t over h. So let's talk about some of the things that I underlined. Well, the half-life is 8.02, so this is going to be h. So I'm going to fill that in. A patient is being injected with 20 milligrams, so that's going to be a because it's the initial amount. And we want to know to the nearest day, which means I'm solving for t. So that variable is staying in my exponent. And then they're telling us they want to know when it goes to 7 milligrams. So that's going to be the final amount. So that's y. And after I have this set up, I am going to solve. So in order to solve, I'm going to start by isolating the base. So I'm going to divide both sides by 20. So 7 divided by 20 gives me 0.35. So I have 0.35 is equal to 0.5 to the t over 8.02. Now my variable is in the exponent. So what I'm going to do is convert it to logs. Keep the base and switch. So log, my base is 0.5 of 0.35 is equal to t over 8.02. Remember, this is my base, and then these other two pieces switch spots. This side, I'm going to use my calculator, alpha window. So, in my calculator, I have alpha window choice 5 says log base. My base is 0.5 and then I'm putting in 0.35. So on the left side of the equation I'm going to have 1.514 and so on. And it's still equal to t over 8.02. Remember, I want to solve for t. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this over 1 and cross multiply. 
So back to my calculator, times 8.02, 12.1468, and so on. And if I go back up to the question, I circled it. They wanted it to the nearest day, which is a whole number. So T equals 12 is our final answer. Let's take a look at a few more examples, except for these I'm not going to solve. I'm just going to read through the problems and set them up with you. You can, of course, try to solve on your own because they all follow the same process. Isolate the base, convert to a log, and solve. Example 2. The equation for radioactive decay is P equals 0.5 to the T over H, where P is the part of a substance with half-life H remaining radioactive after a period of time T. A given substance has a half-life of 6,000 years. After T years, one-fifth of the original sample remains radioactive. Find T to the nearest thousand years. So this means I'm solving for T. So T needs to be in my equation because that's the variable I want to solve for. We just talked about an equation before, but if they give you an equation in the word problem, you have to use that. So I'm starting with P equals 0 0.5 to the T over H. The first thing I underlined was a half-life of 6,000 years, so that's H. I told you that T is what we were solving for, so T has to stay in my equation. So I need to know P. So somewhere in this word problem, they told me what P was. So if we go back, it says P is the part of the substance, and then... Later on, it says that one-fifth of the original sample remains. So what's the part that's remaining? It's one-fifth. And as I said, these were just going to set up. You could keep the base and switch in order to solve, but this is the setup for this example. Example three, you are observing a mystery radioactive isotope. At 4 p.m., there are 2.5 grams. And at 9 p.m., there are 1.7 grams. What is the half-life of this isotope? Round your answer to the nearest hundredth of an hour. So what is the half-life? First of all, this tells me that I can use my equation. The second thing that tells me is I'm solving for H. which means H needs to be left in my equation. So, Y equals A 0.5 to the T over H. At 4 p.m., there are 2.5 grams, so that's what I'm starting with. This is my initial value. And then at 9 p.m., there are 1.7 grams, so that's what I'm ending with. And we know we want to solve for H, so that has to stay there, which means somewhere in this question, they told me what T was. T is the time. Well, if we start at 4 p.m. and we go to 5 p.m., that means that it's a total of 5 hours. So our equation is 1.7 equals 2.5 times 0.5 to the 5 over H power. We're not going to solve this. If you wanted to, you would isolate the base and then convert to a log. Let's look at one more. Example 4. Radioactive iodine I-131 is used to treat thyroid disease. Its half-life is 8 days, which means after 8 days, the amount of I-131 remaining is half the original amount. A dosage of 60 milligrams of radioactive iodine is administered. The next dosage can be given once there is only 20% present of the original dosage. Determine to the nearest tenth of a day when the second dose can be administered. So, 
I see half-life, which means I can use that equation, y equals a 0.5 to the t over h power. Let's go back and look at the things I underlined. Half-life is 8 days, so this is h. A dosage of 60 milligrams is given, so that means that a is 60. We're looking for the nearest tenth of a day, so this means I'm solving for t. So t stays in my equation, which means I know the final amount. We want to know when it's 20% of the original, so I need to know what's 20% of the original, but in this case, the original is 60, so I want to know what's 20% of those 60 milligrams. So I'm going to start 0.2 times 60. So if I go to my calculator, 0.2 times 60, 20% of 60 is going to be 12. So that is the final amount because once I get to 12 milligrams, I can give the next dosage. So 12 equals 60 times 0.5 to the t over 8 power. Once again, if you want to solve, you would isolate the base, so divide by 60, and then convert to a log. But I hope this helped to explain how to set up half-life word problems.